Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 22, near the end of the book of 1 John. I'm going to ask today a big question, and our title is, What Sins Lead to Death? Well, I'm going to skip right to the answer, and the answer is, all of them. All sin equals death. All sins lead to death without the intervention and the grace and the mercy of God. Listen with me. This is from 1 John chapter 5. I'm going to start with verse 16. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask and God will give him life. To those who commit sins that do not lead to death, there is a sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. All wrongdoing is sin. But there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning. But he who has was born of God protects him and the evil one does not touch him. All right, so let me get just a couple of preliminary points. Number one, it starts with if anyone has a brother, sees his brother. So we have a brother. So you, just an easy question is, who is my brother? And that's somebody whose life you're already in. It's someone who you already have some spiritual capital with that person. It's somebody that you send a birthday card to or a birthday text to. Um, there's a, a, a criteria. So maybe for some, the the passage is going to, this passage is, the only thing you need to know about this passage is you've got to get back in fellowship. You've got to back, get back and earn some brothers and people that can stand with you because we're talking about some serious stuff here and you're going to need some help, which is one of the points of the passage. Because number, point number two is see your brother. So here the charge is not to see sin and fault with the whole world or the whole organization or maybe the whole country or the whole church. This is playing small ball with people that are in your boat, people that you already have this this connection with, people that you already send a, a Christmas card to or something. All right, the third thing is to ask. So this is the context of the passage is asking and asking confidently and being in, in accordance with God will God's will. So being in relationship with people, but also being in relationship with God, where we lean into God and uh, connect confidently with him. Uh, if you want to know more about that, go back to yesterday's podcast. All right, the fourth thing here, and I think this is the greatest news of all, is that there are sins that do not lead to death. Now, they don't start that way, in my humble opinion, because all sins lead to death without the intervention of God. The point here is there are sins that don't lead to death. Why? Because God has made a plan for restoration. Essentially, he's saying there is hope for people. There's a way of restoring. So we have forgiveness. We have an intervening uh, God. There is remedy. And now don't take it for granted because it was given preciously. It, it, it was very expensive for God to do, to, to do this. So it's kind of like, yay, Christmas, but yikes, Easter. This cost God something to forgive you and put a plan of forgiveness in, in place. So the point is, don't abuse this principle. So don't willfully, in an ongoing way, in an ongoing pattern of sin, and expect God God's forgiveness. That's presumption. And guess what? This presumption is a sin all, in and of itself. So the fact that there is a remedy means that you're a Christian, it, it, uh, you know, until the first time you sin, no, it doesn't mean that a Christian is in this ongoing process of restoration and recovery. But there are unrepentant sins, there are ongoing sin, and people can can sort of, you know, stick a finger in God's eye and say, "I'm I'm just going to live in that battered sin. I can, you know, keep on sinning." So there are sins which leads to death if they are not. Uh, in the path of restoration of God. So the point of the passage is don't intentionally sin and don't not feel bad about it. Don't not enter this restoration process. So let your sins be unintentional. Yes, we are, you know, a, a sinful people before 
uh, salvation and after salvation. But let's not abuse the system. Don't make premeditated, repetitive, non-repented of sins. So unrepented sin, ongoing sin, living in a pattern of sin, one that keeps on sinning, sinning, there are consequences. And the ones that are listed here are terrifying. Number one, it says that the evil one touches you. Well, if we could physically see Satan, it would be a horrible sight, I think. If we could see him for his true essence, that he's a murderer, that he's a liar. And I think if we could see Satan put his hand you know, his finger on our forearm or something, we would say, get your filthy hands off of me. But that's what happens here is we say, I'm going to leave God's presence, if you will, and I'm going to, you know, vote with my feet and go with the Satan guy. You know, intellectually, we would never do that. But that's what we're, we're doing. And and the other consequence is that you will be outside the perfect protection of our big powerful, weaponized, and caring God. It's essentially God saying, hey, you're on your own. How how did I get there? Well, you decided for it. Read Romans 1 about this. You decided for it, and eventually God gives you up to the power of your sin and and the consequences of your sin and the payment of it. Trust me, you don't want justice for your sins. You want mercy. You don't want to have that. You don't have that kind of firepower and riches and ability to make your sins right, absent what Jesus has done for us. So don't abuse the system of grace. Don't abuse the grace by keeping on sin, sinning. Don't make it a habit. So here's my prayer today. Help, help me to see this in me. Help me to see this in my brothers. Help them to see it in me. Open our eyes to sin in us. And then... Help us to see it before it happens, to prevent it. And if it does, let's agree with you and repent quickly and correct ourselves and lean into you and ask and that you would give us life back. So never let let us get so far to revile you and reject your forgiveness and grace. And Lord, may you give us life. Thanks for listening.